Hello, Tommy Moore here from the Bartitz Lab. In this video, we're going to look at some of the work of Tommy Burns. Now, Tommy Burns was a rather small heavyweight champion of the world, uh, but fought some of the best and baddest in the game. And he had a very unique style of fighting, which essentially we still see today. But he was one of the very early adopters of so many of the principles that we see a lot of successful fighters move through in the later parts of the 20th and 21st century. So, Tommy Burns, some signature approaches from him. Now, the gloves that I'm wearing, just a little note, these are of around about the same period. So these gloves are from 1920, and they give you a feel broadly for the type of size and shape of glove that Tommy Burns would have used. Okay, now, one of the first things that Tommy Burns talks about is the attitude or the guard. And he talks about the academic guard and what he calls the American crouch. So the academic guard for Tommy Burns has the rear fist, so in this instance for me the right fist, although I'm south poor and making it easy for you all at home. The rear fist, the right fist, held round about here, so anywhere kind of liver mark kind of area. The lead hand somewhat supinated, the foot, the feet in a relatively L-shaped kind of fencing-esque fashion relatively upright and the shoulders relatively bladed to the opponent. So you see the shoulders are in line like so. So you're relatively upright and this offers you mobility, stability, offers you to be able to get in and out. It's a very, as you mentioned, an academic way of boxing. But the problem is against rather slick and skillful opponents that aren't so caught out by the lead offs, by the jabs, you can find yourself in trouble with the increasing amount and variety and skillfulness in close in play. And Tommy Burns is a shorter heavyweight. Being in close is the preferred range for him. Shorter arms, shorter body, he needs better footwork and he needs stronger circular shots. So we're just gonna talk about Tommy Burns' favored guard, which is the American crouch. So he brings his body and his head forward, his feet in a relatively similar position, and the hand a little bit further back, here. So you end up in this, it almost looks karate-esque in a way, the head down. And you see him hold his fist in this way and this way. So variable from here to here. It's at this time where we start to lose much of the supination that makes up some of the old school boxing we know and love. And the pronation, the turning of the wrist, starts to become more common. But Tommy Burns, American crouch from here or here. The body inclined forward, the chin tucked, the head down, like so. And this is what he calls the American crouch. And with this, he uses the great footwork he got from lawn tennis and other athletic pursuits to be able to move with good rapidity. So he had good footwork, but he kept himself low and stable. And already being a relatively low guy wasn't a heart or a natural thing to do. And you'll notice the hand relatively unnaturally cantered here, you know, turned this way, as opposed to a more traditional, greater coverage of the mark. You know, the hand starts to get a little bit more hip orientated, like so. So the American crouch being marked nice and low, okay? Now, one of the things that you see Tommy Burns do is master the art of counter hitting. When you're in this American crouch, which is awkward for me to do because I'm a big guy, but let's just go with it. When you're in this American crouch, your ability to scientifically pump out that lead hand just isn't the same as <coughs> you, know, you can't pull off the same speed, accuracy with your lead off from the American crouch. But what you can very readily do is sidestep to your left or right and apply great force to the body and to the head. So a large part of Tommy Burns' American crouch strategy is to be low anyway, because punching down is hard for an opponent. It's hard for them to hit your mark, it's hard for them to hit your jaw if your head's down and your mark's tucked away, like so. That's one element. Then he works very heavily on his sidestepping footwork, so if a jab comes in, he's already low, so he doesn't need to manually duck, he can just step and rip from here stepping into the blow. And there's lots of shifting blows in Tommy Burns' work. So he'll step and either same leg, same hand, or opposite leg, opposite hand. Yep. Either way, that shifting, stepping footwork was a really good way for Tommy Burns to accrue power. So if you're down here in the American crouch, he'll slip to the side without having to do much fancy head work because you're already in the crouch. 
smash that straight in. And what you'll notice in Tommy Burns' work is there's almost a train walking beam style exchange between hands. So let's imagine I've just done that step and hit. He retracts the other hand, again, almost in a karate-esque manner, in these short, sharp elliptical circles. So what you see very often from Tommy Burns is you're down here, a shot comes up high, and the rear hand tucks in, and then it moves backwards. Do you see these kind of short elliptical circles in which he fires? He's got shorter, stockier build, shorter, stockier arms. He's got short arms. So Tommy Burns, sidestep and hit, very common. Whoom! From here, whoom! From here. Then it's very common for him to then reverse that motion. So going from here, whoom! Whoom! So whether it's coming over the top in an elliptical fashion, or underneath in an elliptical fashion, doesn't really matter. But this is very common and easy to do from his American crouch, over, under, over, under. So you see that's a big part of his striking forte, part of his striking approach. Being so low that he can off step to the left or right. Whoom! Whoom! From here, being able to step either way and fire the shot was very, very important for how Tommy Burns fought. Another thing you'll notice is that as a short guy, he's evil because all men under five foot six are evil, proven by science. Tommy Burns, what he likes to do is he likes to punch you hard in the shoulder. So if you're punching, if you're thinking about punching, if he's just feeling spiteful, again from this American guard, attacking the head with straights requires timing and range that just isn't available from here. If you're attacking the head for Tommy Burns, it's normally off a slip, off a cover, he's moving in nice and tight. Short, sharp, elliptical walking beam shots. But if he is here and he doesn't want to get jabbed to oblivion, again, he's in his American crouch, he'll just smash you really hard in the shoulder, either shoulder. From here, from here, just dig you right in that shoulder. And bear in mind, these are small gloves. These are the gloves people were fighting in, heavyweights were fighting in it. Big, heavy guys were banging each other with what really now would be classed as a, a bag mitt, yeah? So again, these dug into your shoulder, they really hurt. Punching yourself with a modern boxing glove on the shoulder, you won't really feel shit. With these gloves, you can feel the knuckles through them. You can see my knuckles through them. You can see the indentation of the knuckles. So hitting in the shoulder, Really does fucking hurt. So American Crouch, he'll smash you in the shoulder, smash you in the shoulder so he doesn't eat too many jabs. Then eventually, instead of a shoulder smash, he'll hit you with one of these arching elliptical shots. Very, very cool, very, very useful. What Tommy Burns also talks about a lot is punching to the kidneys. If you imagine part of his game is flanking. All of his game is flanking and firing. Flank, fire, flank, fire. So from here, your flank, and fire. From here he'll flank and fire. Often that means he gets in positions like this. So Tommy Burns has two ways of attacking the kidneys. One as a kidney chop. So it comes in with the forearm or the bottom part of the fist. And he talks about how often that will take the fight out of an opponent straight away. A couple of sharp digs to the kidneys. And he talks about the kind of varying global rules at the time. You know, what would be a declared a foul in Britain might not be a foul in America, might be a foul somewhere else. So he talks about the kind of, the grey, it's almost like the pirate code. You know, it's a grey code. Being up here, you've got these chopping shots to the kidneys, and you've also got circular kind of hooks into the kidneys using the knuckles. Again, you've got great knuckle penetration in these gloves. So when you find yourself in these grapples, as Tommy Burns would as a shorter guy in the American crouch, hum, 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 into, the, into the kidneys, or hum, 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 into the kidneys, very, very, very useful tools. And he's also one of the last writers to talk about throwing hammers, hammer blows. And he says, just launch it like you would a hammer. So again, he'll be in that American crouch. Again, it doesn't particularly suit itself to lead off star boxing. It suits itself to sidestepping, and cross counters, short overhands and underhand uppercuts. 
in that walking beam fashion, he always replaces the hands. Replace, 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 replace. That's a big part of how he worked. So you've got those elements, but you've also got from down here, if he does want to hit you square in the face, he'll either step and hammer or just launch a long hammer fist. So again, from the American Crouch, you just straight down, bang. And again, I point out how thin and small these gloves are. So when you get a hammer fist with this, there's barely any padding over the knuckles. The sides, there is little, very little. It's just like an extra skin on your hand. You, you might as well be wearing a fucking condom on your hand. That's how thin it is on the side. So again, from this American Crouch, if you just want to crash into you, you just step and smash, bang. Pretty much always for Tommy Burns, it will be a passing step or a shift and a smash, unless they're up close in this tangle. So you get these shorter range hammers where you, where you couldn't quite flank and he's being smothered or longer range again from his American crouch from here. So Tommy Burns, short, evil, successful, American crouch, one of the early pioneers of crouched, less than academic boxing, crouched boxing. He's got a big line in punching shoulders to make sure that you can't attack him at range because he's short and evil. Hitting the kidneys with chopping blows or hooks because he's evil. He's got a big line in hammer fists, one of the last people to talk about using hammer fists, throwing the hammer straight down the face, bang, straight on the collarbone. Nasty usage but clever given the size of the gloves and that elliptical style punching of short, sharp, elliptical style shots that come from unexpected angles, typically because we're in that lower American crouch, we can fire decent bombs. We can fire that shot out there. So Tommy Burns, great guy. It's a great guide. Um, there's some really good material out there about him. And this is his own personal guide of self-defense. You can see his views on training, equipment, approaches, fouls, regional variances of boxing all around the world. So. An absolutely phenomenal boxer, um, probably a little bit of a dirty boxer I would say, given his reputation, but still, as a smaller guy, he's got to hustle where he can. And there's some really great self-defense manifestations from his boxing that you can apply in things you're interested in. So for me, for example, in Bartitsu. So, hope you enjoyed that. Give the man a look up, look, read his books, watch his content, get engaged with it. Tommy Burns, little evil bastard that you can learn cool shit from. <laughs>